Hello everybody, Reggie Time here with another 10 and L on Unibet session um, and I am pleased to report that so far my um, Unibet 10 and L adventure has been pretty much an unmitigated success. We started early last week by putting £60 onto the site and as of Monday today that um, before today's session, I'd run that up to £207 in euros. That's 195 plus whatever we've got at the tables. Two, I think we started with 246 something like that. Uh, 236 sorry. So we've made... Do, 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 140... We made 17.5 buy-ins at 10 and L. I actually played a very short session of 25 and L1 lunchtime last week and lost €25. Euros. So we've actually made... Around 20 buy-ins at 10 and L in just about a week, which is way, way more than anticipated. Um, I'm not going to play any 25 NL because the games are just, they just seem quite rubbish. I'm happy just plodding away doing this. What I've been doing is playing these games and playing Sky on the side. I'm not playing Sky on the side at the moment because it would be too much when trying to do a video. Um... But that's what I've been doing and it's been going remarkably well. I'm having a really good month on Sky too. So we're shaping up to hopefully have a post to impressive results by the end of the month. Of course, that can change. Um, we can hit a dry spell. We can hit a downswing. But at the moment, I'm pretty confident that we're going to post some good numbers for this month. So that is that is pleasing to say the least. Um. I think for any Sky Rigs watching this, they'll certainly agree that the Sky landscape is is getting much worse. Even over the weekend, the games just weren't that good. I was able to find good games, but there just weren't very, very many of them. Um, so it's that's a little bit disappointing. But it's just the way it is, I guess. check back here with our aces it's kind of hard to see how we're going to get three streets from a worse hand you do always run the risk of letting your opponent catch up with something like a turn set of sevens or something but nevertheless it's not a spot where I'm usually going to bet three streets very often unless we're up against like some sort of super whale who can have lots of very bad hands that, that don't fold. <laughs> I want to talk a little bit about my attitude to game set in this video. I've done it before in previous videos, um, like over the course of my five years or so making YouTube videos. So we'll address some of the points that have been made to me. Recently, uh, this is a pretty large donk. But usually, I raise donk bets with an open ender, but this is a pretty big one. So, I think we're gonna have like less fold equity versus his donk size. If he is donking like a pretty strong hand, like a set or two pair, then I don't want to just give him the opportunity to like three bet on us and then um, maybe fold out, make me fold out my equity. Now he's donked again. It's very surprised if he doesn't have at least a, like two pairs here or maybe a set, so we're just going to jam and not expect him to fold. He does have a set. Happy days. Good read, Reggie. I like that. I like that. Um, I mean, we could end up value warning ourselves a little bit here with this ace ten. We could certainly check back some slightly better hands on the jack turn, but we're going to bet anyway. Because check calling doesn't seem like a good line there. <laughs> Playing three-handed over here. That's got to stop. That needs to stop. We don't do three-handed unless there's a very obvious fish. And on Unibet, it's not easy to pick up. Not easy to pick up on that quickly. <laughs> I 
we're going to get back twice here and get picked off by something like ace 10. I mean this attempted river bluff what about to attempt doesn't feel like it's going to be too good to me but I don't think our king high is any good and maybe just maybe sometimes we get a queen to fold or pocket eight or something right so we'll get a new table up here in just a moment if we just rejoin straight away it's almost certainly going to rejoin us back at the same table so we'll um, give it a minute then pop another table up wait till the numbers in the lobby change just a little bit then it's very likely to put us at a different table <clears throat> I've been playing a pretty nitty style on Unibet. Well, pretty nitty style everywhere I go. What particularly nitty style? Um, focusing primarily on just value hands and then um, using like equity to like using draws and what have you to not balance my range, but just make sure that we're just raising with not only value hands and then. Um, my view, these games seem pretty nitty too. It feels like pre-flops easily the most aggressive street in these games, and then post-flop players tend not to be doing too many too that super outrageous things. Could be wrong, but that's that's how the games feel. Uh, good shot here, so we're gonna uh, multi-way though with no back door, so we'll check back and then see what happens on some turns. Before we decide to, if we bet, if it checks through to us again here, then um, I would probably have bet big two streets, but given it's now gone bet call, we just fold our good shot. No big deal. Hopefully, uh, could it just pop back in where it's meant to be? And it's probably brought us back to the same table where. Well, not bad look of things it's possible to say, but at least it's forehanded now. We'll see if it fills up. Yeah, so there's been some comments on Facebook and on my recent videos. Um, basically, saying to me to work harder on my game get better at poker play tougher games to improve versus regulars etc and i'm not saying any of that's bad advice you know how can it possibly be bad advice um perhaps playing in tougher games is like I'm not necessarily sure i agree with that i think you can play in soft games with some good players and improve at poker um so i'd agree with that a little bit you don't necessarily need to just play in exclusively tough games to improve uh, but studying, yeah, for sure. I mean, that's just common sense, isn't it? And then we'll play these kings and we'll get back to the point. Now, well, folded. Um, if you and that's really good advice. If you have ambitions of moving up in stakes, playing higher, um, wanting to play like come a fifty and L, hundred and L, two hundred and L regular. I get that. I don't want any of those things. Um, I'm very like clearly now a recreational player who who does other interests in life i really really enjoy my work for those who don't know how work um within the local disabled community in my area um the pay varies depending on who you're working with um but i, I, I earn enough now where i don't really need like a poker income whereas in, uh, when i first started working part-time um i needed that the poker income to help like me to meet my commitments and my saving commitments now i'm capable of earning enough from my day work that i don't necessarily need to play poker i still like to play poker i still like to make a side income from poker um because it can just go straight into my savings accounts and and then um, and yeah it's just just nice to have some saving money my my day work meets all my 
um, financial needs without stressing me too much. I don't have to put tons of hours in. I still I don't work full time hours. I don't do 37 hours a week. I don't even do 30 hours a week. But um, yeah, we do okay. So poker is just like kind of, yeah, we use it to top our income up and, and put some savings away. So I don't need to be going and playing 50 nil, 100 nil, 200 nil and bringing all the stresses and to be frank, unhappiness into your life that, that playing those stakes can often bring. You know, um, I wouldn't imagine there are too many happy regulars playing those stakes who like really contented with life day in, day out. I'd imagine they're on the emotional roller coaster that poker brings. And um, I don't want or need that aggravation in my life. I want to play poker in games that I know are beatable. No, I'm disconnected. In games that I know are beatable. Enjoy myself, make some money, and not have the sleepless nights, not have the anxiety of fuck me i'm on a 12 buying downswing and that 12 buying represents a thousand pounds or whatever i don't want or need any of that so to play in the games i want to play and i don't need to fucking study 10 hours a week on doing the kind of studying that i don't find remotely fun um i've never looked at a solver in my life i never intend to for example um i'm not interested in studying like game theory optimal ways i i, I mean i i appreciate all right, I want to understand how to play like a reasonably well balanced game so that I can deviate from that and understand why I'm deviating. That's important to me. Understanding that that when I'm unbalanced and why I'm unbalanced, you know, against certain players, maybe I'm going to be unbalanced by like never bluffing in certain spots or I'm going to be unbalanced by over bluffing in some spots. But if that's specifically tailored to a particular player then that's fine and that's that's kind of why i want to understand what being balanced means and why i try to understand what being balanced means isn't because i want to be balanced in all spots it's just i want to understand when i'm not when i'm really quite heavily unbalanced and why i'm doing something that makes me unbalanced and you can learn that and then appreciate that within your own game without spending 10 hours a week in the lab and you know whatever amount of hours playing i maybe have 20 to 25 hours a week maximum to put into poker and that's maximum probably less a lot of the time um i do not want to be spending half of that time studying stuff that i have absolutely no interest in and what is also completely needless in the games that i play um and if you game select correctly you don't need to be like in the top one percent of poker players in your pool, um, you can just, you know, you can be decent, solid, and um, and achieve your goals. And for me, my goals are, you know, if I make any money per month, it's nice. Ideally, I like to aim for making four hundred a month. Um, anything more than that, and it's like I've, I've hit the jackpot. Anything less than that, it's like eh, a bit disappointing. But whatever, never mind. Um, so a lot of people, I don't know, some people have maybe tried like give advice that they think I maybe have never thought of. Um, a little bit like when, you know, when you were a kid and when you were playing a slot machine or when you're playing a quiz machine and some random person comes up behind you who you never met before and starts giving you unsolicited advice that you just don't want to hear. And then there's like other people who are just being snide and they know they're being snide. Um, and, you know, to those guys, fuck you. So the, to the people who are like saying, oh, um... You know, you need to do these things because they think that's they know best and they think they know me better than they know myself and they don't understand why I take the approach I take. Then they're they're like the they say they're like the unsolicited um slot machine guys, unsolicited unsolicited slot machine advice guys where they mean well but they're irritating. But then you've got the other ones and they're just like flat out snide cunts. And uh, most of them probably aren't very good at poker and probably not doing very well, which is what makes them unhappy enough to make snide comments in the first place. So absolutely fuck those guys. Um, people tell me to work on my game. Maybe some people need to work on their personalities, you know, maybe. Maybe that would help them in life. So, yeah. So, yeah, we're, not, we're, we're never going to be doing super studio things. If the, if the game ever becomes unbeatable to me because I'm not willing to put the work in, then I'll just do something else. I won't be one of these players that carries on going um you know as a losing player i'll just find something else to do i'll try and learn a new game i'll play tournaments and if none of that works i'll just quit i won't be um put in the comfortable position that i've that um 
that Pork has given me in my life. I won't be putting that in jeopardy by throwing good money after bad. The, the day I become a losing player and I'm required to start using solvers to win at poker is the day that poker dies for me. Uh, because if you if, if the day ever comes where you absolutely need to be good at solver work to be 25 and the online is the day that poker really is completely fucked in the ass, isn't it? It's it'll be fucked beyond beyond salvation, I would imagine, unless something significant changed in the in the landscape. So I'm never going to be doing that. Feel free to keep giving me that advice, um, and I'll feel free to keep ignoring it. So yeah, if you meant well, then. That is this genuinely isn't meant for you. I'm not I'm not having a go at you. Um but if you don't mean well, then just be aware that I'm not ass mate. Um shit flush draw here, paired board, but not gonna get too excited in a limped pop. <laughs> I suppose we need to do we need to call once paired board low flush draw? No. I don't think we do. We're not gonna win much money there if we do make a flush because we're either gonna like just get one street of value, possibly two small streets of value in a limped pot, or we're gonna play a much bigger pot and end up kind of with a hand that's maybe getting too weak on a paired board low flush to play a big pot so yeah I just stay out of trouble there and not worry too much if he's taking me up a little bit of equity and I would see but this quite often into somebody with a full stack maybe not quite as keen to do it into that stack size I was going to check call a smallish bet. I mean, we, again, we could be getting blown off our equity there a little bit, but again, I'm not going to lose too much sleep over folding weakish hands in smallish pots. Some of you guys will be tearing your hair out that we just check folded a flush draw in a limped pot for four blinds or whatever it was, three blinds. Some of you will be tearing your hair out that I just folded a pair for one bet um, I understand that but I'm not too not too fussed about occasionally folding equity or folding the best hand I tend to make a lot of folds, not based on like this street. It's it's based very much on the situation of like what's going to happen on future streets. How often can good things happen for me versus how often can can bad things happen for me? So that spot with the six four, for example, um, yeah, it's probably incorrect to fold at that point with with bottom pair and the back door flush draw on that board. But we're out of position to somebody who doesn't have a lot of money. So if we do back into a hand, we're not getting great implied odds. And quite often, if we like makes another smallish bet on the turn, we can just make lots of like small mistakes, calling too many bets versus people who don't size very well, etc. Um, and it just didn't feel like it was a situation where long term. I was going to make an awful lot of money. Um, it felt like it was like break even at best long term, maybe possibly slightly losing. So if I identify a situation, I think this isn't a spot where I can really make much money, but it is a spot where we can we can leak money. Then I'll I'll tend to just say right, let's just avoid this situation. It's not a superb situation. Fine if the guys have me pants down and like just stabbing there with I don't fucking know some unpaired over cards or whatever then good for him same with the six seven suited we were out of position in the multi-way pot with the low flush draw and a paired board um no we yeah we we, you know, we could think about calling there trying to make a flush and get to showdown but um again it's just not that much of a big deal to me so if a situation but if, if i don't like a situation early in the hand i'll be quite decisive um which i think long term 
does better does serves me better than players who are like oh i need to see one more card or i can't fall to this bet it's too exploitable etc i'm not too worried about that stuff i mean yep yeah, i'm going to be exploited from time to time but what i'm not going to do is sometimes i exploit myself um like some players do when they they, they play a more like gto solver type style and they end up making too many like thinnish weak thinnish cards with weak hands because they're supposed to be defending certain parts of their range versus certain sizes against people whose aggression frequencies don't merit making these like loose thin calls. Um, not sure if that's made a huge amount of sense, but yeah, basically, um, I guess what I'm saying is I feel these games are relatively passive. Uh, very rare do I do I catch people running big bluffs. Usually, when when people have been aggressive, they have a hand that's got a lot of equity, or they have a really strong made hand. Um, so, against those types of ranges, like sticking around with bottom pair too often, or sticking around with weak draws, is probably a losing play long term. Um, so, I'm not worried if theoretically I'm going to be overfolding in some spots, because um, in practice, I'm not sure that I will be. And again, I'm sure that will have some guys tearing their hair out because there are a lot of guys who are massively into at the theoretical side of poker in terms of like GTO solvers, etc. And that's what floats their boat. That's fine. If that's what you get from poker, you enjoy the the um, you enjoy the, the the learning side of it, the thirst for it, the Try to understand the fine minutiae of, of like frequencies versus particular sizes and particular ranges, etc. That is absolutely fine. If you enjoy that and you get something from it, then I'm not saying don't do that. Um, you know, you do whatever makes poker fun for you. It doesn't make it fun for me, which is why I don't do it. Because um, primarily, if you're watching this channel, there's a good chance you're just a very recreational player. And poker should really be about enjoying the experience having fun with it so even if you are losing you know you're getting some some value for the money that you're spending when you're playing you know sometimes you can you could like class online poker as you know you can be a losing player but enjoy it so it's like having a trip to the cinema a trip to the pub going and watching your favorite sports team whatever it is you do you know going out for a meal or something you, you know it's, it's fine to be bad at poker and still enjoying it i have no issue with that never have i never will um, poker means different things to different people doesn't it and it's not for any of us to tell anybody else how they should be how they should be living their poker life I guess I guess that's what I'm saying no, none of these guys have got a ton of money so we're not going to go too big with the squeeze here because we just don't need to In theory, this is a bet, but I think for it to work, we need to fire two barrels. And I'm not a big fan of multi-street bluffs in three-bet pots when people are going to have a lot of like pairs in their calling ranges that they're going to try and call at least twice with. What happens to me a lot in these spots is bet, bet, check back, and then we get show pocket sevens. I'm happy just to keep the pot small, and maybe we even win at showdown sometimes versus stuff like jack-10 suited. Is jack suited, those types of things. Is jack suited. Again, theoretically, that's on Sam. We should almost certainly be three bet C bet in that spot on um, King High Bod, and we three bet versus the only position opener. In practice, at the micro stakes, I'm not sure we need to be doing it as much as perhaps lots of people are. I prefer my bluffs to be done when I've got good equity when called. I'm not really a big fan of, of firing bluffs where, if we're called, we're quite possibly in rough shape and again that will piss a lot of people off well not a lot of people because to be fair most of the people in the channel and the facebook group are recreational players who aren't dead assed about people playing perfectly um but yeah it will probably trigger some people but as you can see by my results year on year on year um what I do works. It works for me. Um, and that's that's all that matters. Back in the day, I used to make 
I don't want to say a lot of money, but good money from online poker. And it's without question that I've made more than £100,000 lifetime. I've been playing since 2006. I've been a winning player since 2008. And I had some years, some years in like the, like probably 2010 to 2013, when I was making, you know, £15,000 a year. Very comfortably, possibly even more when I was playing 100 nil full ring on triple eight and pokerstars.fr you know there's a two thousand pound ones were not regular but they happened with a decent frequency so i'd, I'd absolutely take the overs on 100k lifetime profit hundred thousand pounds <clears throat> lifetime profit not there anymore of course and if i make five or six grand in a year i'm very happy with that so my expected earnings aren't anywhere near in line with what my previous earnings were but yeah I speak from a position where not many players can speak from which is yeah they made decent money from from poker long term not tell you what point i'm trying to make now other than basically <clears throat> i know what i'm doing to an extent Probably going to fire at least two shells at this flop and this board. And we're not, we're just going to fire one shell because it's all that was required. <clears throat> so, the next video, this bank row will be. Less than it currently is, because if I'm not going to be playing 25 vanilla, I don't need 240 euros on the site. So what I typically do on Mondays is um, trim my accounts, like cut the fat off them, because I don't keep a lot of money on life for people who haven't followed me for a long time. I rarely keep very much money online in poker sites. I just don't think there's a real need to do that. Um... You know, in these days we're transferring money around. I mean, back in the day when <clears throat> it took maybe five days. We're going to fall to this two export over, but it um, took five days to get your money off a site and this, that, and the other. Uh, I kept more money on sites, but um, then poker sites started going, well, not many, but some poker sites started disappearing with player funds. And I was like, oh, let's not keep lots of money online anymore. Uh, even though I trust Junior and I trust Sky, you know, I also trusted. Um, Full tilt and sites like Absolute Poker and Ultimate Bet for a while, and mm. didn't stop them fucking off with folks' money, did it? So <clears throat> I keep very little money on sites. I'm probably going to trim this back down to say 150 euros. It's been a good week on Sky, like you said, so I'll be trimming this the Sky money back. But that's you don't need to know that because we're making videos there. Um, so yeah, the next video starts, and I don't explain why the bankroll has gone from 240 odd euros to. 150 euros, that'll be why. Yeah, it's because it's been trimmed. A bit of, a bit of tanking here. Let's bet in. Maybe sometimes when you see people tank for a while, then, then a bet comes. I'm going to keep the pressure on here. Wouldn't be in love with facing a race, to be honest. I mean, obviously, we're not going to go anywhere with our set, but if we get raised here, we're probably in rough shape. <clears throat> I think we call here and just call River Bricks. Like, if it's a spade fold, if it's a anything straightening. Now we just have to call here and lose, I guess. Yep, loose to the nuts, there's a surprise, but nothing much we can do there. Um, if, it's a, if it's a dirty river, we sometimes get away, but... 
and I really do know the micro sets at the back of my hand and then like the turn check raise when is it ever just not the nuts but uh, we have a set and then the river breaks off I mean <coughs> would have been funny to see the reaction from people there had I actually found the fold on the turn even um, yeah never mind never mind it is annoying when you know you beat or you call anyway but sometimes you just have to because who knows maybe sometimes once in a while he has the two pairs there or once in a while he just that, does that the turn to big draw the bricks but it is mildly irritating so we, we've been playing now for 30 minutes we've played two big pots both on the same table and both time our opponents just had an incredibly strong hand the rest of the time there's been not that much happening at the tables and that's that is the micro stakes for you <clears throat> um a key key skill in the micro stakes is having the discipline to fold versus strong lines when you've got a pretty strong hand now I'm not saying a set of deuces, that probably should never be a fold there. But if, if I had, say, for example, top pair there, or even some kind of two-pair combination, um, you know, they're the types of hands you'd probably want to be looking towards folding. Um, you're winning when you're the micro stakes by value betting versus players who are, like, incapable of folding bluff catchers, and by... Um, you know, keeping the pressure on some sort of denying equity with your like strongest draws, and then you protect yourself by just not paying off. It's it's really just old school time of memorial ABC poker. Um, it still works remarkably well at, at these stakes. Um, if you're the sort of player who just never folds bluff catches, then you're gonna have a very unhappy long term poker experience. Uh, do we fire this river? Given he tanked the turn, I'm really tempted to just jam it here. Puts huge pressure on all his pocket pairs. I mean, pocket seven's just got there, but it puts huge pressure on all of his pocket pairs. So I think we'll go for it. Good stuff. I mean, we blocked a lot of the potential draws you could have there with our ace high and our spades but nevertheless his range is going to have like a lot of medium pairs in there that like call the flop comfortably call the turn even though they don't love the jack and then find themselves in a really tough in a really tough spot on on rivers and if this is a time he's got one of those strong hands and we just like over bluff bluffing to the top of his range then you know what who cares it's well, i think it's still it's fine this guy clearly has a hand worse than a queen so they've got like it's good ace high or some kind of pair. So we're going to bet big and just hope he has something like, I don't know, pocket tens, pocket jacks, ace king that just doesn't want to fold given how the hand's gone down. Pocket sevens. For all my flaws, as a poker player and there are many and I'd, I've been and it's very rare I blow my own trumpet because I just can't be asked I don't need to I do believe that my hand reading or reading the population and reading players you know it's just it's as good as most people that I come up against I would imagine I'm very confident in my um very confident in my in my understanding of how the population plays how individual players play and doing well against that you not just like understanding what they're doing but also figuring out 
like the, the best way to play against them. I mean, we're just going to chop this pot up a lot here, aren't we? I mean, we lose to exactly quads. We need to race still, obviously. fold this turn and it's already it's feeling quite thin it's tempting it is tempting to just kind of check back and call river breaks but if there's just too much out there we need to protect our hand if we are ahead if we get raised we just have an, an easy but annoying fold did feel like the sort of turn can we're going to get checked to on a lot i wouldn't be surprised to see a donk bet on this river either which would make life awkward. Yeah. And there's so many things I've missed. You could argue that, you know, this is a mandatory call, but having the ace of spades really, well, it doesn't make much difference here, but I suppose. I felt uncomfortable ever from the turn. When we see bet in a multi-way pot, he called. He's bet the turn, he called. Now he's donked the river. Yeah, just going to make the fold there. Cause it, again, that's one of those folds that's probably theoretically unsound given given the run out, etc. But in practice in these games, they just have it so often in those spots. So yeah, you put that in a solver or whatever and like against an unknown player, it's probably going to say you need to be calling there probably quite a high percentage of the time. But in practice, you know, how often, when you think back to your own games, when you're calling those spots, how often you're like, fuck me, how do they have that, or whatever. Um, probably quite often. It's just one of those spots where you know you probably need to call a decent amount of the time, but it's probably safe to just overfold. If this guy jams, we're going to have to call, of course, because of his stack size. Um, we're going to check this river and allow him to try and bluff with like any high spade you might have. Or just randomly decide to value better an 8 or turn an 8 into a bluff or who knows what. When I'm playing badly, I call there with the ace-jack. Um, when I'm when I'm playing well, or when I when I'm playing confidently, should I say? Maybe not well, but confidently. When I'm feeling on top of my game and I'm feeling like my my confidence is up, and I, I make those faults. And if I wasn't making a video, I'd, I'd already have just about forgotten about it. And we're only still talking about it now because it's probably a key moment in the video that where some of you guys would possibly have have done something different to me. I mean, I almost wanted to just check back the turn and then call rivers, but I guess it was just a little bit too much value to be had from draws, and our hand probably needed some protection. But it's disappointing when you fire two streets with a decent top pair and have to fold rivers to an unusual line. Sorry for the moment of silence. I was about to have a vape and realised that we were in need of a juice refuel.
and someone checks twice on the there's King XX two flush draw boards they'd almost never have a strong hand I'll fold here I'm gonna fold here There are some times when this will be a C bet, but against two relatively short stacked players, we're not going to take that option. Queen six and eight nine. Eight nine was going nowhere there, was he? Barry Halls. Good name, sir. Good name. <clears throat> probably just going to go for another two or three minutes on the video I think 45 minutes seems plenty long enough I'm going to continue the session but I'm going to take a look in the sky lobbies another hour or so before my wife comes home so i'll have the house to myself and use the peace and quiet to get a couple of hours in hopefully What to do here? Bet fold, that's what we do here. <laughs> so next time we're not involved in any hands, we're going to wind the video up. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. Hope it hasn't been too ranty. Although I am aware that some of you guys enjoy the rants. Like calling pocket pairs out of position, but we're getting reasonable implied odds here. So yeah, we haven't got any hands going on, so we'll take this opportunity to 
end the video and wish you all a good week. Don't know when I'll be making the next one, but I expect to make at least one more this week. <clears throat> so take care for now and I'll see you later. Bye bye.